What's up, guys, and welcome to another week of me talking about five interest checks that have caught my attention for better or for worse. This episode will have zero key sets, mainly because I didn't really find any that were interesting. But I will be talking about keyboards and accessories, so stay tuned till after the break. The very first item on my list is a work mat. This is an interest check from Old Goldhand made back in August. He proposed fabricating a USA made silicone mat measuring 62.5 by 38 centimeters, weighing in a little over a kilogram, giving plenty of space to work on PCBs or switch lubing. They are aiming at roughly $50 to $55 per mat, and the last update was made actually just a few days ago. They have apparently refined their casting process and formulas and have a few prototypes in gray and purple. The final colors chosen are black, gray, safety orange, purple, turquoise, cream, and coral. So why would you be interested in a silicone mat anyway? During the soldering or desoldering process, flux and solder dust tends to splatter around, which can then stick to your boards or even your dust mat. This makes it very difficult to clean off. I currently use a silicone dust mat that I picked up on Amazon. The only issue that I have with it is that it's kind of small and it's hard to really put any of the components over here. I think this interest check is a great idea. The colors look absolutely amazing. However, because I frequently stream my builds, I need to find a color that looks good on camera and doesn't hide what I'm doing. A lot of PCBs are either white, black, green, or dark yellow. So in my particular case, I'd probably go with coral or dark gray. The MacMillan verdict is highly recommend, especially if you solder a lot. Next up is the Polygon 65. This was posted in September by Rotwit, located in Denmark. The Polygon is a 65% keyboard weighing in at roughly 3.8 kilograms. It's got a separated out arrow cluster along with the right column, a rotary encoder, and some of the largest bezels I've ever seen on a board. It's also got a typing angle of 8 degrees and a pretty hefty brass weight. The plate itself will also be brass and the mounting method is going to be isolated gasket mount. This will have four pins used to position the plate precisely. This is actually similar to how the key cult does it. PCB is going to support per key RGB. It will have a USB-C daughter board. It will be hot swap. There is currently no indication of ESD protection, but I sure hope that it does have it. There's also no mention of QMK or VIA, but given the hardware on the PCB, I'm pretty sure it's compatible. In terms of layout, it seems to only support two, ISO and ANSI, with split spacebar. I'm a big fan of 65s. In fact, the last couple of my purchases have all been 65%. This board catches my eye because of its aesthetics. Overall, I love how the board looks, but I'm not so sure about that bottom design. It kind of looks like the outsole of my shoe. I wouldn't necessarily call it ugly, but it does come off as a bit strange. What would be cool is if he filled in the tread with brass, which would not only add heft, but also outline the polygon shapes. I'm also a big fan of large bezels, but in this case, it might be a little too much. I think it would look better if he cut it back about a fourth. And not sure about what you guys think, but I think the arrow keys here are too separated out. This blocker feels a little bit too thick. Last but not the least, not feeling too good about that split spacebar with a key in the middle. His reasoning is that he's a heavy function row user, and having a key in the middle serves as his function key. He also uses one spacebar as space, and the other as backspace. I know layouts are pretty much preference, but I think in this case, you could use QMK's SpaceFN functionality to accomplish the same thing. SpaceFN is basically tap for space and hold for FN. While we're on the topic of layout, I'm not too psyched on the ANSI layout, not having a 2U backspace. And look at the size of that right shift. Like, granted, I don't use right shift, but that's a 1.25U key right there. This would necessitate buying an extras kit on GMK Group Buys, as I don't think there are too many base kits that have a 1.25U row 4 shift key. I like the board, but I'm going to have to give this a MacMerlin verdict of maybe. Next up is the Brick 65 posted by JM Sir in September. 
This is another 65% board with arrow keys and rightmost columns separated out. The difference here is that huge top bezel where you are free to attach your Legos as well. There's actually not too many specs listed, but from what I can gather here, it's got a 6.5 degree typing angle, QMK via powered PCB, and it also comes with a daughter board. This is going to be a fun board, so this will appeal to keyboard enthusiasts who also have a LEGO collection. But there's really not a lot of space there, so don't put your Millennium Falcon on. It's not mentioned anywhere, but this board, I'd say is inspired by the IROX LEGO keyboard from a few years back. Apparently, JM Sir will be providing several varieties of bricks, including bricks for artisan keycaps, and a brick with function keys and knobs. That's really cool. Apparently you can even put LEDs in there. At this moment there are still questions regarding layout support, but I'm not seeing too many hard specs on the case itself. This is what I call a novelty board. It's not particularly beautiful, in fact I'd call it gimmicky. The main determining factor for a board like this, I'd say, is going to be the price. If it's going to be 350 or more, most people would pass unless they're a die-hard LEGO fan. I'm going to give this a Mac Merlin verdict of maybe. Next up is the Southpaw 75 V2, posted in September by Holy Switch. I actually did a bunch of streams for the Southpaw 75 V1, so if you're interested in watching any of that content, hit up that link above or down below. Anyway, the Southpaw 75 V2 is a gasket mounted 60% with the left side numpad. It's got brass or FR4 plates and has a 3.5mm PCB plate foam for further dampening. The board will come in either black, e-white, or navy, and the PCB will support multiple layouts. It will have ESD protection, USB-C, and of course, QMK and VIA support. Looking at this image, I can't help but notice that the board does not support ISO. Just kidding, oh, or am I? Anyway, the latest update was on October 5th, detailing their plans to forgo the brass weight and have the PAW logo baked into the aluminum backing. Unfortunate, but I think this is a good cost-saving measure. I do have to say that while this V2 hits a lot of checkboxes, I would have preferred to see the USB center mounted and, you know, make that a daughter board too. With that said, this is one of the most unique layouts in the community today. The Mac Merlin verdict is, strongly consider. Last but not the least is an interest check posted in September all the way from Italy. This is the Pizza 65. The Pizza 65 is a 65% keyboard designed and made in Italy by four Mac enthusiasts. It features a seamless top mount design with a 7 degree typing angle and features a 1.5mm aluminum plate with optional brass, all for the price of roughly 300 US dollars. There is no universal 65% layout, but the cool thing about this board is that it's supposed to support most 65% PCBs. I'd imagine that to mean any PCB or any 65% PCB that has a USB-C on the top left and a blocker for the arrows. Off the top of my head, I'm thinking the Savage 65, the KBD 67 Mark II, and maybe the DZ 65? Of course, if you'd rather not buy any of these, there's also the premium PCB option for an additional 70 bucks. This premium PCB will support ESD protection on all lines, it'll have overcurrent and over voltage protection, an STM32F0 microcontroller, and QMK support, with a little note saying, hopefully even more firmwares. Another cool thing to mention is this board will be delivered in a pizza box shaped package, with two original Pizza Keep stickers. That's pretty awesome, like these stickers are pretty cool and I'd love to buy them separately. Pizza Keyboard seems very engaged in the discussion, in fact his last update was on October 8th. He's got a typing test and a few other renders throughout the thread, so be sure to read up on that when you have the time. This looks to be a very decent 65% keyboard. It's got top mount, nice looking bezels, it's seamless design makes it look very clean. Like, it's not very flashy, it's actually plain looking if you ask me, but that's not a bad thing. Like, honestly, if you were looking at the top down like this, you might mistake that for a high profile drop alt. 
But do keep in mind that a lot of things get mistaken for drop alt. In fact, that key cult I was building a few weeks back, like people on stream said, oh, is that an alt? <laughs> the real value of this board, I think, is going to be the PCB. It states ESD protection on all lines. I'm only familiar about ESD protection on the USB line, so I'm curious what these other lines might be. The move to SDM32 microcontroller is great as well, but depending on which F0 they choose, this will determine if VIA can be made possible on it. I'm gonna make a huge assumption here, but if this board is meant for many 65% PCBs, then will a PCB made for it be applicable on many 65% keyboards? Since it seems like you can split up your purchase here by buying the case and then add on the PCB, I'm gonna give two verdicts here. The Mac Merlin verdict for the case is a strong maybe, and the Mac Merlin verdict for the PCB is a strong recommend. All right guys, thanks again for watching another episode. If you want more details, hit up those links. And if you have any questions, drop them down in the comment section down below and I'll try my best to get back to you. All right, hope you have a good rest of your weekend and I'll see you when I see you. Goodbye now.